Hello, welcome to today's behind the scenes look at buses. This might get a little bit ranty um, because obviously I do research this stuff as well. And the number of people who use the explanation of a actual bus, like buy a ticket, get on a bus, go somewhere, that really isn't a particularly helpful analogy, but everybody seems to use it. And I'll explain how it does sort. That analogy can work, but only in specific circumstances, which aren't the ones that you would typically use a bus in. So we might have to have a little bit of Star Trek cloning in here and volume might be represented by the heights of people and the people are tracks. <sighs> so with that out of the way, let's get ranting. Don't forget, like and subscribe is always appreciated if you find this stuff fun. So this has got to end up being a quick tip for next week. This isn't going to be a quick tip. This is going to be me sharing my thoughts. So a bus. Here are four tracks. I've just dragged them out of Apple Loops and together we can play them. OK, let's look at the mixer. These four tracks are all getting on the same bus and that bus is going here to the stereo out. You can see that here because they're all listed output stereo out. So they're all getting on the stereo out bus. So in terms of a bus analogy, all the tracks, there's lots of seats on buses. So lots of people can get on and they can all go to the same place. Now on that route, things may happen. There may be stops along the way so maybe at some point let's not do anything that's going to kill the computer they may stop by the chroma verb stop and all of them will have chroma verb applied to them we can change that amount in the plugin They've all got on the same bus. They've arrived here on the stereo out, which was the destination for them. They've all gone past stop chroma verb and come out at the other end, which now comes out of your speakers, your headphones, uh, your bounce mix, wherever you want it to come out. You know, this is the, the end destination basically is stereo out. OK, so everyone gets on the bus, they come to the stereo out and job done. Now, in terms of actually using buses, what we tend to do is use send, not buses. If I did want to, instead of getting on the stereo output bus, I might say, actually, these... What are we on? Uh, let's put the acoustic layers, so the drums, we're going to get them to get on a different bus to start off with. So let's put them on bus number one. OK. So it was called AUX1. I'm going to call it bus one so we know what's happening. So the drums are now getting onto bus one and then bus one is going to take a little journey and then it's going to transfer them all onto the stereo out bus. So they're going to get back on with the other channels. If I lower the volume of the drums, that lowers the volume that goes through to the bus. So let's imagine we're shortening the people 
or shortening the track, the person that's getting on, and they are getting lower in volume. Okay. Now, that's one way of thinking of it. So this track has now got on a completely different bus, but when it's done its thing and it's gone for its little ride, it gets back on stereo out bus with everybody else and comes through. Typically, that's not really how we would use a bus. What you would normally do, let's put that back to the stereo out. So all these tracks are gonna get onto the stereo out bus. What we often want to do is apply an effect. So let's use bus 10, but this time we're doing a send. By default, the send is negative infinity. So if you drag that up, if you alt click, you get to zero, to unity. So now a certain amount is gonna to go to this bus 10. Okay, what does this mean? Well, what's going to happen now is, let's just leave bus one there for a second. Bus 10 is going to have the same, you know, the unity amount of signal go through it. Let's mute the other tracks for a second. And what you'll hear is we've now got double the volume because not only is it coming out of this track here, but it's getting onto the stereo out bus and coming out, we've also sent it on a different journey. So what we've actually done is cloned the track or the person that's going to get on the bus. We've put one of those clones on the stereo output and the other one we've sent on bus number 10 that eventually come back and rejoin the bus. So now both clones are on the stereo out bus, so they're actually making twice as much noise. Okay, if we turn the output off, so that now this is only, it's creating a clone, it's sending it on bus 10, but the other clone is now going nowhere it's not getting on any buses so by the time it comes back you've now got normal volume otherwise we get double now this is where busing is really really useful because what we would really want to do is have these little clone people getting on a different bus having something different happen to them before they come back to the stereo out. So they go on a different journey, but it's a clone. For example, let's take Chroma Verb off the master and only put it on bus 10. Now, usually, this will set itself up like this, which is an unusual default setting if you're using a normal plugin. And it has set the dry signal to zero and the wet to 100%. That means out of bus 10, the end result is only going to be the processed signal. There is none of the original signal that is going to come through here. So. Let's again just turn that to no output. That's only the result of the chroma verb. We can turn that down. And what you would normally do then is you would mix it in to your taste. And there's all sorts of other stuff you can do with this sort of routing. So you could 
have a signal going to another track that's doing really harsh uh, processing and then mix that back in so that's parallel processing. The other bonus of this is I only need one instance of my favourite reverb. I can change the amount that's being used but if I want to use the same reverb on the guitars all I have to do is bust this to number 10. Now if you're doing this what you don't want to be doing is changing the actual level of this reverb here because we want each track to have the full amount of whatever effects we've chosen and what you now do is revert to changing the input amount so this is where you would now mix it so if we play that and mix it in slowly it also means we can add the guitar and mix in the amount of chroma verb we want from the guitar So you can see where this is going. We now only have one instance of chroma verb instead of, if you can imagine this being a much bigger track, you could end up with loads of instances of chroma verb on every single track, or even worse, a really CPU intensive plugin that just kills your computer. So I think this is the message I'm trying to get across is while buses and the actual transport is a useful-ish analogy in terms of taking routes from A to B, when we are doing this in terms of actual mixing, what you are more likely doing is creating a clone of a track or a clone of a person and sending it on a different bus before eventually it gets back on the stereo out bus with everybody else and then comes out of the speakers, headphones, whatever. Um, I'm going to have to shorten that quite a bit for <laughs> next week and try and make it less ranty, I think. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope that makes sense. Leave a comment if you've got another take on it. I'd love to um, hear other ideas, but a like and subscribe is always appreciated on these little videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.